So we're back with video two. Your prep work is done. You have all the supplies that you need to complete the first few stages. So at this point, you should have six two by two panels, which we have four over here, one here and one here. And I put two different panels from two different pieces on here just to show you that once you get a nice even cut, it's really hard to see the line in between. Now you can tell that these are two different pieces because we have the darker on this side that's a little bit lighter on this side. Uh, but with a good blade straight cut you're going to get a really nice line and when it's finished on the table and you've painted it up it'll be real hard to even see that line which is exactly what we're looking for. Before we do any cutting we need to take a look at the blade we're going to be using. This is a heavy duty Stanley. Uh, I don't remember where I got it. I've had it for a long time. And this is a smaller Stanley. It's pretty generic compared to this one. This one's real nice. You can see the different sizes of the blades. It's probably going to be hard to see the different thicknesses, but the one on the left is actually much thicker. Uh, it's a sturdier blade and it's good for deeper cutting. I don't recommend using small ones just because when you try to make cuts I've got some scrap foam here you make a try and make a straight cut the foam will actually bend the blade Let's see if you can see that the further you go down and so you could get angle either way when you're trying to cut a straight line so for that reason I like the big, thick, sturdy blades. They usually cut a very straight line and you don't have to worry about bending the cuts as it's going deep. One more quick word about whatever blade you're using to cut the foam. Make sure that you have an excess supply of sharp blades. Styrofoam is like kryptonite to Superman for razor blades. Um, it will dull them faster than anything I have ever seen before. It's crazy, but that's just how it works. So just make sure that you have extra blades on hand and do not try and cut with a dull knife because all you'll do <clears throat> is just rip the foam instead of making a nice smooth cut. Before you get ready to do any cutting, take an old scrap piece of foam and your blade and make a few practice cuts. So, for example, I have my metal ruler, scrap piece of foam, and what I'm going to do is come in at a perpendicular angle, and I'm going to make a shallow cut, maybe an eighth of an inch, all the way down. <clears throat> and I'm going to do it again, going about another eighth of an inch, all the way down. Third cut. It's going to be about three quarters of the way through the foam. And the final cut will be all the way through the foam. And I didn't keep that lined up properly, but it doesn't matter. You see we have a nice straight cut. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so now that we've covered the basics, we're ready to make our first foam cut. So what you're going to do is just move your move one of the pieces of your MDF out of the way. And the reason that we put the two pieces on the forefoot sheet is to space it out so we know that we're going to have enough on the edge we'll have enough once we cut in the middle and we'll have enough left on this end for piece number two. I don't necessarily recommend cutting on your dining room table. Uh, it's completely up to you. If you are single, if your wife doesn't mind, or your parents um, have a propensity for forgiveness, hey, go right ahead. That's up to you. I have an old sheet of MDF on the bottom so I'll be cutting through the foam and 
probably making a little bit of a divot in this old piece, but that's okay. That's what it's there for. So now we're ready to cut. I'm going to take a piece of this handy tack. It's just what you use to put stuff up, put posters on the wall, um, hold models in place while you're painting them. You know, it has all kinds of uses, but for this, we're going to use it to hold the ruler down to make sure the ruler doesn't move. That's very important. We want it to keep to stay right on the edge of the board. You don't need much. It's probably not going to move much at all, but just to be safe, give us a nice straight edge to cut on. And that's probably plenty. So now we take our knife. We're going to make one shallow cut to begin with. Give that a little more. Staying right up against the ruler, holding it at a 45 degree angle. And we'll go back through again. And now our final pass should get us completely through the foam. So we have one side completely cut. We're going to do the same thing on the other three sides, but we have one thing to decide. Do we want to go ahead and use our liquid nails to attach the foam to the wood, or do we want to go ahead and make the cuts before we do that? My personal opinion and preference is to glue it first. And the reason is you're already working with a limited amount of area, so if you make a mistake, and say whoops and you've already cut this side but you don't realize it until you start cutting this side at this point it's too late you're screwed unless you go back and you know piecemeal some foam onto the board you're not going to get a really smooth edge so what I would recommend doing and what I will do is line these up I will use the liquid nails attach the foam to the board and once that is dry, then I will come back with the ruler and hit the other three edges.